Hello, fellow Scratchers! Particle simulations are crazy cool, and they are like the icing on the cake for many projects, elevating a game from good to awesome. Over the course of the next two videos, we are going to be creating some absolutely beautiful particle simulations, from particle streams, fizzing trails, to explosions with collisions and awesome sound effects. Wow, I cannot wait to get started. The colours and the sounds really make it so satisfying to watch, and it gets me so excited as I can imagine this looking awesome in any Scratch game, right? Just too cool. So guys, are you ready? Let's get scratching! We'll begin by creating a shiny new Scratch project, Particles. Our first step is to create the initial particle stream, firing our new particle clones that follow a curve back down to the ground. We'll set the scene in the background sprite, filling the entire canvas black. Against this, our particles will show up really bright and colourful. Then back in sprite 1, sorry Scratchy, I'm replacing you with a small red circle. Zoom right in and draw it around the size of one of these grid squares. That's 4x4 four four pixels. Then make absolutely sure to drag our circle to snap it in the centre of the costume canvas, like so. Don't miss that step, otherwise your particles won't be positioned quite right. And now it's coding time. Let's fire off some new particles, shall we? When flag clicked, and we hide. Yep, this original particle sprite is a clone factory, you've probably heard me say that before. It will create many visible particle clones, but doesn't itself want to be visible. Then we loop forever. Firstly, waiting for the mouse button to be down. And then we want to create particles. Now, but thinking ahead, if we want to create more than one particle at a time, then we'll need this next bit to be in a custom block. So create a new block, naming it Create Particles At, with an input of X and another Y. And of course, we tick the Run Without Screen refresh. That will do fine. Drop the block in after the mouse is down here. For this demo project, we'll spawn the new particles at the mouse cursor, mouse X and mouse Y. But you can enter in any position you like into these inputs. So next up, in our custom block, we go to X, Y of the passed in X and Y inputs. What we need next is to define how fast our particles are moving. Make two new variables, speed X for this sprite only, and speed y. They need to be for this sprite only because each particle wants to be able to move in a different direction, with different speeds. Otherwise, with for all sprites, all the particles would end up moving the same direction in a kind of grand dance. Not really what we're after, gosh no. Ok, so just for now, let's set the initial speed x to 6, and speed y to 12. And finally, we get to create the clone of myself. The cloned particle sprite will take on the same position and speeds that we just set. Almost there. When I start as a clone. First we'll show the sprite, remember that it was originally hidden. Then loop forever, so that we can animate this sucker. And I'm going to use a go to x y. This might seem like an unusual choice, but it's because I need to move both the x and y positions at the same time. In which case, we need to reposition the sprite at the original x position and y position, plus our speed x and our speed y adjustments. Yay! Since this loops forever, it should keep moving the particle each screen refresh and will produce the movement animation for the particle. Let's smash that green flag and run the project. Pew, pew, pew! Yeah, now this is fun. My little red dots are flying across the screen and make some rather funky patterns in the process. You might have noticed that they appear to be congregating at the top right of the stage, however. And indeed, very soon, I've used up all 300 of my available sprite clones, and Scratch is not willing to yield me any more. Shame on you, Scratch. Anyhow, we can combat this by removing the ones that should have gone off screen. If touching edge, then we delete this clone. 
Easy as pie. And now you can stay here firing off little red particle friends as long as you want. And scratch willing, you'll be here until someone calls you for tea. If you're that lucky. But in the meantime, particles just don't look good without gravity to pull them down. So make a new variable named gravity for all sprites, since gravity is the same for everyone. And just after the green flag is clicked, set gravity to negative one. And to have it take effect, drop in a change speed y block by gravity, just before we actually move the sprite. Come on then, green flag time. And woohoo, yes, it's like playing with a hosepipe in your garden. Really very entertaining and a little mesmerizing to boot. I just love the natural forming patterns, <laughs> so cool. But now I want to look at how we can use these particles to simulate a sparkler trail. For this, we want to fire out a batch of particles in a circle all at once. And for this, each particle will need a power and a direction. Find the create particle script and drop a repeat 10 loop around the set speed and create clone blocks. This will create 10 clones all at once because we checked the run without screen refresh box for this custom block. Then create two new variables. Power for this sprite only and dir for the direction also for this sprite only. Set these two variables before we begin looping around. Set dir to zero, that's straight up, and a power of 12. Now to calculate the speed x and y for each particle, set speed x to, and we need a multiply block, the power variable, and we multiply by the sine of our direction variable. Isn't that cool? So easy. Do the same for speed y, only remembering to switch the sine for a cos operator. Lastly, change dir by 360, that's the degrees of a circle, divided by the number of particles we are firing, that's 10. See a full circle in 10 equal steps. Cool, give that a test. Woohoo, it's like having 10 hose pipes all at once now. Ha, <laughs> wacky. Oh, look at that. Ha. <laughs> now, it's not perhaps the circle of particles we were imagining. So let's up that repeat to 30 particles and consequently divide by 30 as well. And then, oh man, yes, now we can see the circle. So good. But just watch out. Once we try to create more than 3000 clones, we do start to get weird things happening to our beautiful circles. So I'll drop the repeat back down to 10. And now rather than creating perfect circles of particles, let's try randomizing it a bit and make a sparkler trail instead. For this, we remove the change dir block entirely and move the set initial set dir and power variables inside the repeat loop like so. Now each particle can have its own direction and power. The direction will be a random number between negative 180.0 and 180.0. The power is also a random number between 0, 0.0 and 10.0. Now including the 0, 0.0 on the end in a random number block allows it to generate fractional numbers and not just the whole numbers you'll get otherwise. So this will make our sparklers look much better. Let's see this in action. Oh wow, look at this! How good is that? It is just like holding a sparkler. Again, we can have a lot of fun playing with this. I can't wait to play with the colours. But before we do, I want to just talk about air resistance and terminal velocity. At present, these sparks float through space and keep accelerating downwards until they are off screen. But in reality, they should be slowed down by the air. That's why fireworks explode out really fast and then slow down as they begin to fall. It's the air resistance. We can simulate this quite easily too. So make a new variable named resist for all sprites. And set it under the gravity to 0 0.9. Great. So back to the start as clone script. 
Where we change speed y, now we bring in a set speed x block. Setting speed x to itself, speed x, multiplied by the resist variable. Being a number just less than 1, this will cause speed x to reduce in speed each time we set it. We will do the same for speed y, setting it to speed y multiplied by resist. Oh, but look, then we also add gravity to speed y, so why don't we drop in an addition block into our set speed y and combine the multiply on the left with the gravity on the right. Then we can remove the change speed y altogether. One less block will run that little bit faster, right? And run the project. What we find is the particles no longer spread out anywhere near as widely, and they all begin to fall together at the same speed. This is the effect of air resistance, and the particles have reached their terminal velocity, the fastest that they can fall before gravity and air resistance equal out. It's so interesting. To see how this applies to fireworks, let's change resist to 0 0.8, and then in the Create Particle script, change the power all the way up to 30.0. There, do you see how the sparks now shoot out and then slowly fall together, just like fireworks? Anyhow, this is a little over the top for our use, so put the power back down to 10.0, and then scroll right up and set the resist to a more sensible 0 0.97, much closer to 1. Just remember, you won't see the resistance change until you click the green flag, right? So, did I mention playing with colours might be fun? How about we just cycle through different colours as we are creating the clones? In the Create Particle script, drop in a change colour by. And this needs to be really small, as little as 0 0.2 perhaps. Don't forget, we are creating hundreds of these clones, so this will actually change really fast. Woohoohoo! How beautiful is this? It's a very magical effect and really brings this project to life. I wonder how this will look if we up the number of generated particles to 100. Wow! Just tapping the mouse now generates these awesome firework like blasts of colour. Now that is cool! One thing that is perhaps missing here are particle trails. You know, how lights leave a motion trail behind it as it moves. These particles, if paused, are perfect dots. What I would prefer is for them to look like this. So how can we do that? The answer is with the pen extension. I'll just put my repeat back to 10 items, and then click into the extension add-ons. Enable the pen extension. Ooh, nice, new blocks to play with. Find with me the when I start as clone script. So as a new particle is created, we can start by setting the pen size to 2 pixels. That makes sure our lines are a little more chunky. Then, before we move this sprite, stuff in a pen down to begin drawing a line. And then right after we've moved, we use a pen up to finish drawing again. This way, each particle will trace its last movement as a single short line on the stage canvas. Well, that sounds cool, but what does it look like? Wow, trails indeed, only these trails are all blue and not matching our particle colours. Easy fix, find the change colour block before we cloned these particles, and pop in the equivalent change pen colour, changing it again by 0 0.2. Right, let's give that a spin. Colour change confirmed, nice! Now if you're wondering why the trail colour is not the same as the sprite colour, it's because the sprite colour effect ranges from 0 to 200, but the pen colour effect ranges from 0 to 101. <laughs> Go figure. Anyhow, these trails are just way too long. They persist forever. Let's stop that. We'll make a new sprite, but before that, change the name of sprite 1 to the more sensible particles. And now make that new sprite, naming it Curtain. We call it this because it is used to cover over things, you'll see. For starters, when flag clicked. And then loop forever. And simply drop in a pen erase 
all block. And run! So the previous particle trail is erased, and then the next lines are redrawn. Each screen refresh. Now listen. You can see here that the screen has to have been erased before the particles draw their lines. So how did I know that this erase would run first? If you wondered that, then well done. That thought doesn't occur to everyone. And the reason this erase runs first is because the forever loop it is within is started before the forever loop in any of the particle clones. Those forever loops don't start running until the clones are created, much later on than this green flag script. And this gives the erase all blocks forever loop priority to run first. Hey, shall we get rid of those sprite costumes now that we have these nice pen trails? Click into the particle sprite, and under the when I start as clone, you'll see the show block. Now we could just hide this sprite instead, but we're not going to do that because I presently want to do some collision detection. So instead, drop in a set ghost effect to 100. That's fully transparent, but still collidable. Useful. There. Beautiful indeed. Okay, still talking about trails then. You may be thinking it would be even nicer to have longer trails than this. If you want to experiment with that, then let's try this. Back in the curtain sprite, create a fully black costume. And then in place of the erase all, drop in a pen stamp block. This will draw that fully black rectangle right over our pen drawings, and thus will result in the erasing of the entire scene as before. We just need to ensure we position the curtain sprite in the middle of the screen at zero, zero. Ah, but since the curtain is a sprite, it currently shows in front of all our beautiful pen. So first we need to hide the curtain sprite. This doesn't stop it from stamping though, so that's perfect. See, it now works just like the erase block did. Except that now we have the option to only partially stamp this curtain using a set ghost effect block and setting it to 95%. That's almost entirely faded away to nothing. The effect of this is that everything we paint on the canvas takes a really long time to be erased. So cool, but this is way over the top for my purposes. I'm going to set the ghost effect then to 30%. Interestingly, you might not think you can see any difference here from our original Arrays All solution, but if I pause it, there, can you see the difference? It's subtle, but it does actually make things feel even more authentic with the movement, which is what we are after. Feel free to play with this and the other values in this project and just have a whole lot of fun experimenting. It's what I do. But I'm afraid that this is the end of this episode, but not of this tutorial. Yes, part two will be coming very soon, and we'll be adding the collisions, the particle bounce, and some fantastic sound effects to really round off the package. If you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, then please do smash the like button under this video. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, checking that bell icon to get notified as soon as the next video is released. If you managed to create something cool with this tutorial, then do post it in the studio linked in the description of the video. I'd love to see what you have made. So thanks for watching, have a great week ahead, and scratch on guys!